will not be sending out a recording of this, but it will be live on our YouTube channel in the next day or so. And it should be live about now, as soon as it gets redirected. And I mute it so I don't have to hear myself. All right, perfect, there it is. So if anybody is on YouTube watching us, welcome. We're glad to have you as well. All right, um, let's see what else. Oh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna share my screen here. And first thing we're gonna do, Catherine, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about you as I get to the book here and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, for sure. So my name's Catherine Capiello. Um, I'm one of the teacher success managers here at Book Creator. I am located in Chicago in the States. Um, a little bit about me, I'm a former educator myself. I've taught kindergarten, third grade, fourth grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade. So kind of all across the board. Um, I'm really happy to be here. And this is one of my favorites just because we're going over some of our newest updates. So I'm glad that you are joining us today as well. All right, awesome. And I am John Smith, uh, for real. I am the iPod teacher on Twitter. So if you're on, on Twitter and you want to give us a shout out, great. Uh, if not, it's all right. We also have emails. Uh, mine is johnsmith at bookcreator.com. So feel free to reach out to me either place. Always happy to talk about uh, books and book creator and all that good stuff. So you can reach out there. I uh, taught special ed for 12 years. I was a technology integration specialist for seven years after that. And now one of two teacher success managers here at Book Creator. So like Catherine said, lots of webinars, training, sales, support, basically anything we can do to help teachers. That's what we're here for. Uh, Meredith got three kids, 10, seven, and four, and a dog, and I love golf, and I love clean cars. So I uh, love to detail cars on the side. All right. And uh, so today's agenda, Catherine, what are we going to be talking about today? Yeah, so um, today we are going to be starting out by going over our new publishing feature, Publishing 2.0. Then we're going to jump into looking at analytics. So there's going to be, or there is, new um, analytics that are attached to your book specifically. Then we're going to jump into remixing. We've been asked over and over again um, to be able to be able to download books and actually edit them. So you're able to now with our new remix feature. So we'll dive into that. And then at the end, we're going to touch upon some of our new safety features. So that's kind of the order we're going to go through today. If you have any questions, I know John said before, put those into the chat. We'll, we're happy to ask um, or answer those. And at the end, we will also answer some questions if you have those as well. We'll do some Q&A at, um, at the end. Um, but as we go through, stick those in the chat. We also want the chat to be lively. So if you are excited about some of these features, um, stick that into the chat as well as we're going through. We'd love to see and hear um, about which ones you're most excited about. All right, awesome. Well, let's get into it. So what is publishing? I'm actually gonna stop publishing this one to make it a little bit easier here. All right, so what is publishing? So uh, when we think about publishing, it's easy to go back and kind of look at this uh, from a historical standpoint. So publishing through Book Creator in the past has been the ability to just, you know, click the share button down here and click this button to publish your book online, answer a couple questions, and you get a link. And when you get that link, you send it out there, and then anybody that has that link is able to read the book. Um, that's what we used to do, all right? And things have changed just a little bit. We're going to show you here in a, in a second. Um, but why is publishing important? And uh, so I'm just going to take a, a couple minutes here to kind of share my story about publishing and why I think this made such a difference. Now, publishing started uh, actually about 10 years ago uh, when, when Book Creator first came out uh, on the iPad app only you were able to take your books and download them as an EPUB and then send them to Apple if you wanted to, right? In order to publish your book through Apple's bookstore. Uh, I decided to do that. I took that idea to my students and it was amazing to see what happened. Basically before publishing, they didn't want to write, they didn't want to do school, they didn't want to listen to me, none of that. But when I told them that I was going to take their work and publish it online for the whole world to see, then everything changed. Engagement went up, quality of work went up. Um, they were just fascinated with the whole process. They wanted to make everything awesome because somebody other than me 
their old fuddy-duddy teacher uh, was able to view their work. All right, and so in the past, you know, maybe the parents saw the work, um, I de the trash can definitely saw their work, uh, things like that. But now people from all over the world had the ability to view my students' work and my students graphed the data. They were all, they loved it, right? Because you could see the countries, you could see, you know, the books downloaded, all that kind of stuff in Apple's bookstore. Flash forward a little bit uh, to about 2017 when the online version of Book Creator came out, uh, we had uh, publishing, right, through this link. So again, you click publish, you get a link, you share it out with people. But at that point, that was kind of it, all right? We, we had a link, people could read our book and they could tell us that we read our book, but we didn't really have any data to, to give teeth to that, that piece that was published, right, to the published work. And so I've been talking about this for years and I'm so excited about it now because the, internally the engineers call it the John Smith update, which I think is hysterical, right? Because this is something I've been wanting for a long time and now we finally have it. And so I'm really, really excited. All right, so now what is included in publishing? So when I click the share button, so my, I've written a book, my students have worked on books together, whatever the case may be for you. We're ready now to take this work and share this out with a wider audience. So I'm gonna click the share button and I'm gonna click publish online, just like I would have in the past. Now here's where things start to get a little bit different. All right, title and author are the same. We do now have the ability to add a description and it says optional, but if you want statistics, you need to put some kind of description in there. So I'm gonna put a description in there. In this case, I'm just gonna say demo book uh, analytics. All right, whatever. Now, here is where things also got get different because in the past, I just hit clip publish online and that was it. But now we have some extra options. Option number one is that your book is private. And if your book is private, the only people who can see it are the people who have the link. All right, and you can stop publishing your book anytime you want. Uh, it's just, it's like the old style. All right, so I click publish, I get a link, I send it out to people. That's what private means. There is now another option though that says public. And when I choose public, not only do I still get the link that I can share out with others, but it is now also searchable on Google, all right, and other search engines. And the other thing that's really cool here too is that we might even feature it in our discover tab or our newsletter. So if you got some stuff that you love and your kids are doing amazing work, if you are able, click public and we'll be able to see that. And so will the rest of the world through searching. All right, now I'm gonna pull up a site here real quick. All right, and this, um, if you put this information, all right, so site uh, colon read.bookcreator.com if you take that information, I'll put that into the chat window here. If you put that information into a search bar, then what you're gonna see are all of the published books through Book Creator that are public, right? That are public. And, and it was interesting because the other day there was like one page with maybe like 50 results on it. Um, now look at it, look at that, Catherine. We've got like eight numbers on the Google pages, right? So. This is awesome. People are doing this. They love the ability now to have it searched. So eventually we could get into this where I could say something like, um, you know, you don't have to do that always, but you could do 50 ways to use book creator in your classroom. All right. And when I click search, then we've got those options and you'll actually be able to see it. So right here, 50 ways to use book creator. So this is going to be really cool. And it's going to allow your books a, a chance to be more visible than maybe they were in the past. Okay, so that is the publishing, private versus public. And then when you click, um, and then there's a section here about remixes, and we're actually gonna come back to remixes here in just a minute, all right? But when you click publish, your book is now published online, and you'll notice here that a, a different kind of feel for the way this looks, which is really awesome. You can see your book over here. You can copy the link or you can read the book online, which is really nice, very clean looking. But here's where the really fun stuff starts to happen. And right here at the top, next to where it says book details, there is a button that says analytics. 
Now, this is not very impressive because I just published it, right? But there are zero reads and I can even see the countries that this book has been downloaded or viewed in, all right? And these, these analytics are updated daily. So if I went and read this book right now, or if somebody read this, somebody else read this book right now, it's not gonna show up tonight, it's gonna show up tomorrow, okay? When the analytics roll over. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you another cool thing about this map. So I'm gonna go to a different book, uh, one of my other books that has been published. All right, so if I go to this, what are you cooking book? And I click on my globe, I still get the same cards, but now when I click on analytics, I see that three people have read the book and two different countries. And what's really awesome about this is I can even move the map around. And when I click on the number, it tells you where that book was read. All right, so not only was it read somewhere in the States, I click on it and it was read here in Canton, Ohio because it was me. <laughs> All right, so I read, I read my book. Um, if I click on the one up here, I can see that somebody in Winnipeg, Canada read our book. So this is awesome because not only is it awesome because you get to see where your kids' books have been downloaded and read and things like that, but it's also great for cross-curricular information now, right? We've got numbers of our analytics, and so now we can talk math. We've got graphs, and we've got, or I'm sorry, maps. So now we can talk about geographic locations. There are so many cross-curricular activity ideas that you can use with this. And there is even a button that allows you to download your map, um, and then you can print that out and do whatever you need to do. Put it up on a board, put little pins in the map whenever a new country, uh, you know, views your book or whatever. But this is really, really cool. All right, so I absolutely love this whole analytics section. Now, the other thing that's really cool about the analytics is that the publishing data goes back two years. So if your book has already been published and it's already been online, the data goes back two years. So let me click on this one here. The world is my audience. This is another book that I have had published. Um, so 23 reads, two different countries, right? So I can click over here's the United States, different 10 times over here. Oh, here's, here's one in the United Kingdom, right? So a lot of really cool data that comes back two years. Okay, so that is super, super awesome. Um, let me look here real quick. I lost track of where I was. I wanna make sure I miss, don't miss anything. Um, oh, and when a book is remixed, another piece of analytics, you'll see how many times your book has been remixed. And again, we're gonna talk about remix here in just a few seconds. Um, but a lot of really awesome data that you can then give to your kids to prove, right, that people are viewing their work um, outside of the classroom. Okay, I don't see any questions in there. Catherine, did I miss anything about publishing and analytics? Nope. Oh, I did, I missed one thing as I'm looking out of the corner of my eye here. If you publish an entire library of books, all right, or if you um, want to archive this library, the link is still active to your book if you archive the library, and so is the data. So if anybody's viewing your books after you've archived the library, as long as it's um, published online, the individual books, the data is still collects, all right? Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, took part in Tweema a few years back. Awesome. I'm looking for... I'm looking forward to Tweema 10. We got to get, uh, we got to get Tweema 10 going here. We've kind of been sidetracked with lots and lots of other things in a pandemic, among other things. Um, but I would love to get Tweema 10. Yes, yeah, so, and from Warsaw, I would love to have you back on uh, Tweema 10. All right. So, Catherine, let's talk about analytics now. Or remixing. Or I'm sorry, remixes. Yeah, remixing. So um, for remixes, I'm gonna have John, he's gonna be showing it and I'll discuss it. We'll, we'll kind of talk about it at the same time. So um, under the book details, when you go to publish a book, you're going to notice what John was showing earlier that you can allow remixes. So this just means, I know one of our main features that a lot of teachers asked was the ability to download a book and then um, edit it and personalize it to make it your own. So basically if a teacher, let's say, um, creates a template, now you're able to actually download that template and now personalize it for your students as well. 
So we've listened to all, um, all of the teachers and we've actually created this and we've called it remixing or remixes. So now when you're publishing, you can turn this on for a book um, and you can make it public. So if you search, if you were to search this on Google, you can actually download this book and then personalize it for your own. So if you click on save changes, um, you'll notice that um, you, you can, there'll be a little, um, when you pr press read online, you'll see that they'll have a little remix button on that book. So you can see down there, it says you can remix this book, but it's always going to have a credit back to the original owner. So when you remix a book, you'll notice when you go to publish your version of it, it will always say on the bottom that um, the, it will always give credit back to the original owner um, and it will give credit back to you if someone also remixes your version of that book as well. Yeah, it sounds a little, it sounds a little confusing, but basically what happens is if I were to download this book, click this remix button, all right, make my book and then publish it. Right here underneath, it'll say this book was remixed using the original version by Catherine Capiello, right? And then if um, somebody copies my book, then it'll say this book was remixed by a version by John Smith, who remixed it from a version by Catherine Capiello. So you're always going to have that, that trail of people who have remixed your book, right? which is really, really cool. And then on the analytics, which John showed you, um, you'll be able to see how many times someone has actually remixed your book. So you can see down there um, how many times, obviously we just turned on remixing, so no one has actually remixed it yet, but you'll be able to see how many times ha someone has actually done that. So that's, uh, I think that's great. If you're a teacher who's actually creating content, you can see how many times someone has actually been using that content which is quite powerful. And then also where in the world are people using that content too? And I've also, uh, the remixing piece I think is gonna be really huge, especially for districts. Uh, I've worked with a couple of school districts and in the past, we haven't had this whole remix thing. So they've made copies of books and copies of copies and copies and had teachers join libraries and things like that. And sometimes it got a little bit confusing. So now as a school district, you can even create content for your teachers, for your students, parents, things like that, put it out on a website. And when the teachers go to the site and click on the link, they can remix their own book uh, version of what you put out there, personalize it for their class or whatever, like a yearbook or you know anything really. So uh, yeah, super, super awesome feature there. And what I'm going to do is we've published, um, there's a blog post, I'm gonna stick this into the chat. And this just goes over everything we're talking about today. And in that, um, there's actually a library um, and there's a remixable book library on that blog post. Yep. Um, if, Don, if you want to pull that up too, I can also put that link in the chat too. So, um, so this, here's the link to our blog post uh, that Catherine uh, just mentioned. Um, but as you're scrolling down through the, the blog, then you will see here it says remixable books um and as it loads there we go talks about all of that good stuff and then uh did i miss it nope there it is there's a button right here that says explore remixable books and when you click on that button it will give you a bunch of sample books that you can certainly remix now there are plenty of others right you don't have to just remix the books <laughs> here i'm sure your friends uh, other teachers are going to have books that you can remix. Your district might even have them. But there are some really cool examples here. So my digital portfolio, travel guides, reading reflections, and as you go down, just even more, right? Some of the books that, that we've done in the past here, well-being and SEL books, uh, we did just partner with Common Sense Media uh, to create some awesome digital citizenship books. I highly recommend taking a look at those. These are really, really awesome. And they're also remixable. And then again, literacy, lots of different choices in here and a wide range of styles and all kinds of things. But um, as we talked about earlier, so if I take this digital uh, portfolio book, for example, and I go to look at it, this is where you will see that, um, that link, right? Or that, uh, that card that says this book is remixable. And so right here, uh, as we mentioned earlier, I click remix. 
And when I click remix, this is what's really cool about this. As I click remix, it's going to allow me to choose where I want this book to go. So if I click my little drop down here, I have a ton of libraries. So what's cool is I can scroll through them all if I want to, or in this case, I'm actually just going to click publishing 2.0. There it is. I click my library and then I'm going to click copy. I and love the search now too. Oh yeah. The search piece. My is favorite. Really nice. Now this book will be copied directly to my library. And so when I go back to my publishing 2.0, there it is. There's my digital portfolio. And it's just taking a second to load. But now that it's here, I can go through and change the text. I can change any of the photos, things out that I want to make it really personal for my students. And then I'm going to publish it. All right. So as we mentioned earlier, I'm going to publish it online. I'm going to click publish. I'll leave remixing off for the time being. But when I go to read this online, this is what we talked about earlier, you will actually see on the card that it was remixed from somebody else. So as I can see here, this book is licensed under Creative Commons, CCBY license, and is remixed from the original content by the book creator team. All right, now, so if it said, you know, if it was Catherine Capiello, it's a Catherine Capiello, or say John Smith, or, you know, Sue Jones, whatever, right? This is really, really awesome. So that's what the remixing kind of looks like in the, in the real world kind of workflow. All right. Anything else on remixing, Catherine? Um, I think that's about it. Um, uh, some books you can also find in the Discover section. You'll notice that there's a little remix little button on some of the books. You'll notice in the top right-hand corner, um, if you explore through the Discover section, you can also see some of those. Eventually, that's where we're headed with remixing is you can find those in the Discover section. So if you see those on some of the books in there, that's what that little button is on the corner. Um, so some of them you can see on that book, cre book cre um, creator activity book right there, that little remix thing, that means that that book is remixable. Um, so that's where that's kind of headed in that direction where it's going to be in the discover section. Yeah, and there's definitely a lot more. Uh, and, and for now, especially if you want, I would definitely go to that link that we shared earlier from the blog post. Because uh, if you go to that link, it's definitely going to be a lot better than kind of just fishing through all the books in the uh, Discover section for now. But we're going to make that, uh, we're going to tighten that up a little bit too here. So it's going to be, it's going to be really nice here. All right. Safety features. Safety features. So safety features are, are bigger and bigger, I think, as, you know, as the days go by, right? There's lots of digital stuff out there and lots of ways that, um, you know, kids find to do things that maybe they shouldn't, you know, whatever. And so here at Book Creator, um, it, it's, this is really important to us. All right. Kid safety is really important to us. That's why Common Sense Media loves us. That's why, you know, we're uh, all compliant and, and all that stuff and safety features uh, around the world. So we just want to continue to make things even better for students and for teachers. We just want to continue to keep, um, you know, this, this core belief that we have, we want to keep it live and, and keep things going. So this is a, this is a tricky one because I don't want to demonstrate this. <laughs> so, so we're going to talk about this one, but if here's what the new safety feature is, if I'm a student and I'm making this book and I put in an image that might be questionable. Now, some of you may be asking, well, wait, why would it be questionable? So students are crafty, right? If I click the plus button, if I click import or media and import, and I choose an image from this image search right here, this is our own built-in image search. All the images are safe. They're all copyright free. There's no issues here. So these images are the best. However, especially with some older students, they may go through and search through here and say, well, you know what? the 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 image of the car that I want is not here, but it's on the regular Google image search. So they decide to use an image from Google instead of using it from our Pixabay search. Well, now in this case, I used car and that may not be the good, uh, best example, but let's say they find something that they like, but it might be questionable. All right, there might be some kind of questionable imagery or content or things like that. 
So here's what happens now. Google's AI determines whether that image is safe or not, all right, the image or video, because it could work for video as well. And what Google's image AI does is it figures out if it's safe. And if it is, it allows the image to be finished and uploaded into the book. If it determines that it is not okay, right, that it somehow along the algorithms and things like that, it determines that the image is not appropriate, then it immediately alerts our company. All right? It alerts our founder and our privacy guy. And they then have the opportunity to look at the images directly. And if the image is questionable, they push a button and it blocks the image. And so what's gonna show up here on the screen is not the image, but a blurred version of it. All right, and that way you only see just like the blurred piece, but it is then blocked. Now, if it is something horrific, right, which is really, really bad, then our founder and our privacy guy may reach out to individual teachers and schools just to let them know what the, the students are uploading and um, explain why it was blocked, okay? So uh, um, it's, it's really important that we, that we keep our kids safe. And in these instances, if something does get passed or it goes, it goes into our system, we then have the ability to block it. So that is our new uh, safety feature when it comes to videos and images. Um, and that's a good question. Are all of these features now available in the iPad app? And the answer to that is no. So these are all features that are available on the online version uh, only at this point. And, and I'm not an engineer, um, but part of the reason that I'm going to believe that this is a, easier to implement on the online version is that the iPad apps are all individual based. So there is no teacher account for you to join. There's, there's, there's no way for teachers to kind of even monitor the own, their own work within the iPad app because it's separate. But for right now, it's all on the online version. And that's definitely something we can send to the engineering team uh, and see if it is going to become uh, av available on the iPad apps. Um, if you wanted to take advantage of some of these features right now, you can use Book Creator on the iPad using the Safari browser. And then you can use um, take advantage of these features uh, that way and just kind of avoid the app. All right. Oh, Mira's in the house. Hello, Mira. Um, good. That is a great question. And that is something that I will need to get clarification on. Um, Catherine, maybe we can throw that into the, uh, maybe we can throw that into the, so the chat right and see if we can great get question. that. For that. But that is a great question. Um, uh, and uh, Dorota is book creator connected with Microsoft. We do have the ability to use, um, you can sign in through Google, Microsoft, um, Clever, uh, email, things like that. All right. And uh, yeah, so we'll definitely, we'll definitely take a look and see if we can get somebody to answer that question here in the next couple of minutes. Uh, if not, uh, Mira, just email Catherine or I um, at some point in the next couple of days, and I'm sure we'll have an answer for that one. Okay, so in, at this point, that is all that we wanted to share with you here today. I think that's, hopefully that was enough, right? Hopefully you're not sitting there uh, wanting a whole lot more, but that's a lot of really cool things. Um, so I guess at this point, um, if you have any questions, any other questions, please put those into the chat window or the Q&A box. And Catherine and I will be more than happy to answer those. Um, but if you don't have questions, you're free to go. Catherine and I just wanna say thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, happy bookmaking. Be safe out there and uh, get out there and, and try all those wonderful new features. So um, awesome. Thank you, Mira. And uh, yeah, so anyway, have a great day, everybody. And we'll stick around for a couple minutes to answer any questions. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you. And maybe we'll get an answer to that question. It was a good, it was a really good question. And I'm guessing it's just images that are inappropriate. I don't think it's going to block copyright issued issues. Yeah. It's a good question. Though. It is. <clears throat> now we did, uh, Mira, did you see our new attribution feature um, when for images? So you can find an image and then um, you can click the little button to add attribution. Yeah, awesome.